This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of the Sunvox Music Tracker and get you started making your first song using it. So I have Sunvox Music Tracker open here on my screen. It's available for download from the following website. I'll have a link for it in the video description. You can see it runs on pretty much every platform you could imagine. Windows, OS X, Linux, and a number of mobile platforms, iOS, Android, and Windows CE. So when you first open Sunvox, this is what you'll see. The Sunvox interface is split into four primary windows. So we'll start at the top in this area here. This top pane is essentially your piano roll that you're used to seeing in a regular DAW. And this is where you sequence your notes. Each column of this piano roll represents a different track. So right now we have four different tracks in our piano roll. We can add more tracks by selecting a clip down here in this timeline and adding or subtracting them. This would allow us to, say, sequence a drum kit and have the kick on track one, snare on track two, etc. Or we could have a number of different instruments all on one clip. So this is our piano roll. Beneath that is a keyboard that's used for note entry. You can click it to enter notes. To the right you have octave minus and plus buttons to move the range of the keyboard. And you can also use your actual computer QWERTY keyboard for note entry as well using the Z through M keys for the uh, natural notes and the A through L keys for the accidentals. So two different methods of note entry. Beneath that is the modular synth section. This is where you choose what synth or instrument you want to select to produce sound in the tracker. So each synth is or, or module is represented by this box and you can see that there's a connection that traces the path. There's a small animation that shows what direction the audio is traveling. This is the default template. It's a little bit complicated. We're going to start a new session and do something more simple in a little bit. So this is our modular synthesis area. To the left is our layers, which you can think of like Photoshop layers. We can place our synths on these individual layers and hide them or show them. To the left of the modular synthesis section is our module parameters a panel. And in this panel, whichever module you select in this main window, its parameters will be shown on the left. And these parameters can be manipulated using the mouse wheel, up and down, clicking and dragging. Um, and this will allow you to tweak each individual module. Beneath that is your timeline. And this timeline you can think of like the timeline that's in a normal DAW like Reaper or Pro Tools where you have audio regions and those audio regions can be manipulated and resized. We have a small audio region down here and if I double click it you can see we can change the parameters. Um, these are the length or the, the number of lines and you can click that and quickly change how long your pattern is as well as you can alter the number of tracks in the pattern and you can name it or give it an icon. So we're going to start by creating a brand new session which should be significantly simpler. So I'll click in the top left this icon, select new project and choose empty. So we now have an empty project. You'll notice that in the modular section there's only an output module. So we're going to start making a simple sequence or song and build on it and learn some concepts about the Sunvox tracker that way. I'm going to double click in the modular window and this is going to bring up our modules that we can select to load and 
I want to load something. I'm, I want to load the drum synth, and let's get some drums set up. So I load the drum synth. You can see we have our module here, but there's no connection to the output. In order to be able to hear this, you have to hold down the shift key on your keyboard, click, and drag to the output module. And now, if I press any of the keys on my keyboard, we can hear sound. You want to make sure that you drag in the direction you want the audio to travel. If I drag from the output to the drum synth, you can see there's no sound being passed to the output. To undo a connection, you simply hold down shift, drag between the two, and that undoes the connection. So we'll redo that connection of the drum synth to the output. And let's enter some notes up in our sequencer in the top, our piano roll. So to enter notes, right now if I play on my keyboard, we can preview the sound. But if we want to actually enter them in, you have to press the space key on the keyboard. And it's sort of a modal method of entry. So when you hit the space key, you can enter notes. If you hit the space, P, uh, space key again, it locks it. You can see the lock in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. So I'm going to unlock it, and I'm going to set the amount of steps that um, I want to take each time I enter a new note. So you can do that by clicking the number, and that will uh, jump you the amount of steps. So I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut Control plus and Control minus to reduce and increase the number of steps. And we're going to go every eight steps for now. And let's put down a kick drum. So I'm going to do Z. So we have a kick drum. And to play that back, I'll press F11, which means play from start. And F12 stops the sequence. So we have a kick drum. I don't really like that kick drum so much. So let's select it. And we're going to um, we're going to select this track, select transpose, and bring it up an octave to another kick drum sound. And we'll preview that by pressing F11. All right, I like that one better. All right, let's add something else. All right, I'm going to add in a shaker sound. Well, it's not quite a shaker, but it's sort of a tick. But we'll add that in. So I will hit the space bar, unlock it, and let's do this every two. And if we play that back, All right, I'd like to add a snare drum. So we'll double click. And let's select sampler. I've read his sampler to the output. Change the color. Let's call it snare. And over in this left-hand panel, I'll select Load. Actually, let's not do this. That's probably a little too advanced. Let's load a preset sample instrument. Now, when you click on the instrument, you can preview it by pressing any of the keys on your keyboard. I'm going to select that one, rename it to snare, change the color, and route it to the output. So I now have the snare focus, so when I enter notes into the tracker, you'll notice that the color is different. All right.
All right, so we have some drums. Let's add in a bass line. So I'll double click. I'll select load. And we can use the Sunvox, the default instruments it comes with. That's what I use for the snare. So let's select a bass. I'm going to change the octave by using the F keys, F1 through F7. Uh, All right, we have our bass. Change the color by moving the slider. All right, and we'll select, let's create more tracks in this sequence. So I'll select my, down here in the timeline, my clip. I'll double click it, and let's increase that to eight tracks. And let's enter in a bass line. All right, let's try that. We'll do it every two. Hmm, it looks like we're going to have to increase the length of this sequence. So I'll double click the clip. We're at 32. Let's do 64. See where that gets us. Okay. All right, and we'll take our current drum sequence and we'll just copy and paste it. Oops. All right. Not bad. So we have a little bit of a sequence going. Everything is in one clip. Let's add some kind of lead instrument. So I'll double click, select load. And let's see if we have a nice piano sound. Let's try this, and I'm going to route it through an effect. So we'll select the delay and route our lead instrument to the delay, and then select a reverb and route it through that, which should sound like this. And let's see what we can come up with. So let's start entering in that melody. I have PowerVox selected, a blank track. And I'm just going to play it back and enter it in. Now an important thing to mention is you can hear the note keeps sounding. Uh, that note will sound indefinitely unless I put a note off after 
the uh, note in the sequencer. A note off is represented by the tilde in the top left hand corner of the keyboard. So to do that, I can decide how long I want my note to be. And I can press tilde on the keyboard. And that's what a note off looks like. So now the note will stop. I want that to start a little bit later. So to move an entire section up and down, you can use the backspace and insert keys. So backspace will move it up, insert will move it down by whatever value you have, well, by one. So let's try that. Alright, so we have a basic sequence created now, all in one clip at a fixed length. And let's go ahead and save that, so you can click the menu in the top left hand corner of the screen, save project as, and let's select where do we want to save this. I want to save this to my Dropbox. Here we go. Dropbox, Sunbox Projects. And let's create a new directory. And we'll call it Intro Sunbox Tutorial. And we'll jump into that directory. And up here we'll type our file name. Intro Sunbox Tutorial. We'll call this version 1 because it's the first part. Great, and now our project is saved. In the next tutorial video, we'll develop on it further. We'll begin arranging, tweaking the synths, putting in some automation, looking at the parameters that you can adjust on the left-hand side of the screen. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe, and visit bkashaaudio.com for more tutorials.